Okay, fifth degree polynomial, I mean, you're looking at it, <clears throat> you should have a rough idea what it looks like. Right? What I mean by that, if you looked at the, um, the function, it's going up like this and down like this. And what they want to know is the uh, bound for the roots. Now, there's going to be a superior bound and inferior bound on it. And we do that by, you know, basically a sign analysis. So, um, you know, what I did here was I, I wrote the function down. And certainly, we've, we've already gone through five examples. I know it's tedious. I find it tedious myself. But I kind of look at it. And again, we're only, we're only on an interval, by the way. What I mean by that, we're only working forward on zero. Now, at zero, the, the thing is definitely positive. I know that much. All right? But then I, I have to start worrying about what's happening as I start hitting these integers. And yeah, it's tough. I'm not saying it's going to be easy for you. But what do you do? I, I would say group the terms to make them a little bit more manageable arithmetic-wise. So the first two terms I grouped together, I got that. And you know, it's a product of two positive numbers now. I know that much. This one over here. This one's a little bit more tricky, by the way, because I'm looking at it, <clears throat> and I think it's somewhere around um, between 2 and 3, it's changing its sign. All right? And this one over here, I'm starting to realize, you know, that's always going to be a positive number, 25x minus 4, I'm in a positive range over here. But it, it's tricky. Right? What I mean by that, picking numbers now. All right? <coughs> and the deal about this one over here, again, at 0 is positive number. And again, it, it's not easy. But at, at some place, you're going to see this thing going up and down, up and down, up and down. All right? We're looking for that root. So at 1... Let me just kind of quickly go through that. You're going to get 1 times 7. There you're going to get plus 1 times, well, that's going to be 6 minus 13. That's going to be minus 7, right? Isn't that convenient? Minus, well, it's going to be 25 minus 4, which is 21. Now, I hope you realize it's negative over here. All right. So what do I know by the intermediate value theorem? It definitely poked through. Right? It definitely poked through. I know that much. All right. Let me cross this out. And it, I'm not saying it's easy. Go to 2 now. What's 2 going to be? 2 to the 4th power. Right? What's that going to be? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. 8, 16, right? And then you're going to get 9. Plus 4. Well, then you can get, you know, 12 minus 13 minus 1. Then we give you your minus. It's a linear term. It's going to eventually peter out. But that's going to be what? Uh, I'm doing 2 now. 50 minus 4, 46, right? So what do you get there? You know, it's not that bad. I mean, you're looking at it. 16 times 9. That's 90 and 54, 144. Then you get minus 4, minus 46. Clearly positive. Right. What do I know? It had to go back up. Right now, someone says, "Do you have to keep going?" Well, hope you realize when you get to three, that somebody really starts to take off. Who's going to take off? This is going to take off. It's clearly going to be a much larger positive number. This will be a positive number, and this is just a linear factor. It's not going to be anywhere near those guys. So it's going to keep going up. So what's the upper bound? The upper limit would be two. All right. So let me outline where that says that the upper limit is 2. From there on out, it's going to go above it, okay? So what do you do next? Well, it's a fifth degree polynomial. you got to do uh, two rotations about the x-axis and about the y-axis. So you're going to have to write down, and I'll, I'll just go through the steps for you, f of minus x. What's it going to be? Minus 2x5. Uh, let's see, plus 5x4. Minus 6x cubed. Uh, minus 13x squared plus 25x, plus 4, and then you do minus f of minus x. We'll check with the key, just make sure you're okay with this. 2x5, uh, let's see, minus 5x4, plus 6x3, plus 13x squared, minus 25x, minus 4. Let's just go to the key. I want to make sure it's written down for you. Let me push this out of the way. And let me get my little red thing out, see how we did. All right, we, we just did this. 
And 2x5, I got that, minus 5x4, plus 6x cubed, 13x squared, minus 25x minus 4. And basically, I do the same grouping pattern, right? Same grouping, all right? And again, we're, we've rotated. So the negative roots become positive, and I got the same generalized shape of the curve, right? So, you know, factor the first two terms, factor the second, and the third. And the, again, it's, it's basically that analysis again. And what are you looking for? Let's write this down for you. I'm looking at the positive numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3. We're hoping it's not going to go on too far. All right, so at 0, what would you get? Well, at 0, you're going to get a negative number. Right, it's, that's the easiest one there, by the way. Let's do the 1. And what are you going to get? Well, you can get 1. And then you can get 2 minus 5, which is minus 3. It's a small number. It's easy to compute with. Then you're going to get, you know, 1. And what are you going to get there? 6 plus 13 is 19, right? And then when you get minus, well, let's see if it's 1. It's going to be 29, right? So what do you get there? You get minus 3 plus 19 minus 29. Clearly negative. All right? And again, I'm looking for something that's going to happen, right? I'm going to, I'm going to go to 2 now. Let me erase this. I'm pretty done with that. A lot of people do this in their head, by the way. I'm going to put 2 down. And what do you get there? Well, you're going to get, let's see, that would be 16, right? And that would be minus 1 plus, well, that would be 4, 25. And then you get minus, well, it's 2, right? So it would be 54, Right, so what do you get over there? Let's take a look. You get minus 16 plus 100 minus 54. That's positive, right? Okay, let's go to 3 and see what happens. Well, you can get 81. You're going to get 1. Again, at some point, that 4th degree is going to really take off, right? And then what do you get? Uh, let's see. We're doing uh, 3, right? That would be 9. And what do you get there? Well, we're doing 3, right? So 18 and 13, 31. Well, this looks very promising at this point. All right? what do you get over there? 75, 79. Definitely positive. So I'm going to say the upper bound is 2. And I'm wondering why I'm saying the upper bound over here is 3. But anyway, maybe I didn't spend enough time on it. The upper bound I'm going to say is 2. I get to update this, all right? So I'm going to say this should be 2. And I'm going to say the, um, the upper limit of that would be 2. And since that's the case, I put that on minus 2 over here. Let's look at the picture, though. And the picture is going to be 316. Yeah, it does, it does stand to reason. Again, I was saying the lower bound is minus 2. And this is the figure we got over there. I made a mistake in my notes, and I'll correct that. All right? So let me just take a look, make sure I did say the upper bound was 2. Yeah, we're okay. 2 and minus 2. Again, 2 is over here somewhere. All right? So I made a small error in the key, and I'll correct it. All right? I'm not sure why I came up with that number. Maybe I was just going too quick. All right? But it will be corrected. You're not going to see that in your notes. Thank you.